Welcome to the shooting show. This week we're back down south with Chris Dalton, stalking Chinese water deer under the watchful eye of Paul Childerly. Over to Paul's, um, over near Warburn, um, lovely estate, a lot of Chinese water deer. Numbers were, were actually quite high, so he, he did have quite a high cull to achieve, so hopefully he was hoping the guys could make a big dent in that. Season was kind of rolling on, a few guys coming down for some metal stuff, but really what, it, what he wanted was a cull package. Shaz joined us down there for the evening, he driven down from Scotland and allowed him out of Scotland. Um, and, and he brought his rifle with me on the camera. We're going to actually try and film him. So I actually took Shaz out on the on the Wednesday afternoon. Nothing metal class, just a just a small, decent little book. Proceedings have been uh, slightly hampered by the needs of agriculture. Never mind, these are just difficulties we need to overcome. Showing his sneaky skills as a Chinese water deal laid out about 180 yards here. We're not quite sure what we've got. I think it might be a big book. When you want a really good book, you seem to be able to find them all over the place, but they were not on the menu. And we saw a, a, a book that fit the category lovely. It was kind of laid down in a, in a rape field. We've got a nice little book here, crawled in 250 metres. There's no idea we're here. Hopefully, it'll stand up. We were laid up for over an hour waiting for it to stand up. Shaz is crawling forward to see if we can encourage some sort of reaction. Start and bark at it, see if we can get it to get up. And despite all our best efforts of barking and yelling and shouting, and whilst it was interested, it really refused to stand. Um, until eventually, eventually it did. And I think the touch low, I mean the deer, I mean the hard little things, 243 was using. Okay, we're now to day four. Um, Again, a lovely day. We've been lucky with the weather. It's been beautiful. I mean, we've had very little wind to work with, but I'll take the dry weather all day long. And actually, to be honest, one of these things with Chinese water deer is actually quite difficult to establish what they are. So you need to be a bit careful when you're guiding to make sure that you don't end up making a mistake and the guys shoot a, a decent buck and it costs them a fortune when they don't really want to be paying for it. Um, but Rick had not stalked Chinese water deer before, so I took him out. He's also kind of working up to his level two, so it might be an opportunity to give him a bit of growlicking demonstration while we were doing it. So it's quite a useful exercise. Um, and the cut and the cold plan was was cull animals, so we're after a doe or a young buck, ideally doe, young doe. Okay, that's us just heading out on day three. A few Chinese water deer in front of us, which Rick's seen. We need the light to come up a bit more so we can uh, positively identify what we've got. We're on call, so we're not going to be shooting any of balls. Big books, and I won't be pleased. Beautiful morning this morning. A bit of a mist, cold frost. The sun's just coming up now. Some Chinese in the field, right field behind us. We're going to try and get up the ditch.
Probably one of the big things with Chinese water deer, they live out in the open and they're not daft and they get to realise that they can live out in the middle of these kind of great big fields on the top of a bit of an undulation. You don't have much of a backstop, you've got no line, you've got no approach because you're in line of sight the whole time. So it's often quite difficult to get close and when you do it can sometimes be quite difficult to engineer a backstop. Fortunately we got into these two and they were kind of in a little bit of a hollow with a trench and a hedgerow and then a revetted bank behind them so we had a perfect backstop for the shot. So once we'd taken the time to get into position, could get him on the bipod on the edge of a ditch, it was a pretty straightforward shot. So his, his first um, Chinese water deer ended up um, in the bag um, after a, a stalk of probably about an hour and a half. Um, so again, a happy man. And now, it's the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News. Richard Foles has won the Clay Shooting Classic. He scored an immense double victory at Garland Shooting Ground last week, topping the pile in Sport Trap, then coming back on Sunday to win the sporting event. He finished just one target ahead of the pack, and for a while it looked like there was going to be a shoot-off. But in the end, his score of 1-3-9 stood alone. It was close, um, and at the end of the day, there's, uh, there's never many targets between the top shots now. So, um, you know, to come away with high gun today just by a bird is, is very pleasing. Um, and to be in front of everyone else in the field, you know, it's always, always a challenge and uh, very pleased to do so. Uh, but no, delighted to win the sport trap as well. So, yeah, always, always nice to come out on top. Sam Green won the classic fit ask and he won treble A class in the sporting as well after a shoot off. Janine White was the ladies' high gun and took home a Browning Liberty shotgun. With unforgettable targets set by Steve Lovett of the Clay Shooting Company, headline sponsorship from Sportsman Gun Centre and ATA, and six solid days of shooting action, the classic was one to remember, and we're already looking forward to next year. Elsewhere in the news, there's still not been a resolution to the general licence saga, and shooters are getting restless. DEFRA has delayed issuing new licences, saying it needed more time to implement a legally robust system. But we'd initially been promised results before the bank holiday, so they're now over a week overdue. Basque's Director of Conservation, Caroline Beddle, said people are desperate and need a workable solution in days, not weeks. And Great Britain has won another shooting medal on the world stage. Shona McIntosh took silver in the women's three-position rifle at the ISSF World Cup in Munich. It's the first time in 30 years that a Brit has won a World Cup medal in 3P and adds to Shona's gold at the World Championship last year to confirm her as a hot prospect for the Olympics next year. That was the Shooting Show News. Well that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you're not a member of Basque, it's time to join now. Basque, looking after your sport, looking after you. This has been The Shooting Show. <laughs>